Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I've got a landscape shot from the Icelandic Highlands that I captured on the recent Luminar adventure over there in Iceland. And what I want to do is kind of walk through this edit and talk about kind of how I'm controlling the light and the things that I'm doing with different masking options. Because there's a few things that I do with masks in pretty much every photo. It works all the time. These are great little tips to keep in mind when you're editing. Uh, any kind of photo really, sp uh, specifically for me, landscapes and also cityscapes. But I want to walk through that, share these ideas with you, and hopefully give you some ideas about what you can do in your own photos. Here's the photo. Now I'm going to start with Develop Raw. And generally what I do here is I like to keep the histogram open, but I don't really want to live by it. Um, you know, I want to use it as a guide. Uh, in this case, I feel like I needed a lot more contrast. Uh, I'm pulling down the highlights a little bit, like a negative 20, 21. Uh, but I'm also lifting the shadows a little bit to offset some of the darkening that occurs when the contrast gets adjusted. Uh, blacks and whites, I don't really do anything here. I am going to warm this up, and I'm going to 7319. I'm just typing that in is a lot easier. And I'm bumping the tint up a little bit as well to about a 50 here. And then, you know, maybe a tiny bit of vibrance, like a 5 or 6. So something like that. And sharpening, I usually do about a 20. So if you look at the before photo, there it is. Quite a bit flatter, of course. It's a raw file. And you look at the after photo, I'm getting there. It was a, it's a beautiful location. It's called the Valley of Tears. And um, I just, I loved it, to be honest. It was just fantastic. But uh, the raw file is coming to life, right? So there it is before, and there it is after. And if you've been here before, you know my second tool that I really like to use is Super contrast and that's simply because it's I think just incredible at helping me get the light uh, looking the way I want the light to look I guess uh, which is really you know a lot of what editing is about is just trying to get that light um, adjusted maybe that's the best word for it kind of you know crafted that sort of thing and so uh, as you see I'm moving things around here and of course I'm looking at my notes because I can't memorize all the different things that I do to any particular photo because generally speaking the list is kind of long uh, but if you take a look at the uh, before and after of Super Contrast, there it is before, and there it is now. It just gives it a little bit more depth. It's not a massive amount of change, but a little bit of depth, and I think that helps with the overall look of the photo. So now that I've done that, I'm going to start jumping into the masking. Now, if you're not familiar with masking, I do actually have a masking course, and uh, you can get that on my website. You can just click on gymnex.com, click on Shop, uh, and you'll end up... Uh, here, if you click on the Luminar Neo Masking Masterclass, and I actually got a coupon code that I'm offering, a discount code, if you want to save $10. Uh, the regular price is, of course, uh, $137. The everyday sale price is $77, but you can get it for $67, so $10 off using the code, which I'll put down below along with a link. But it's 17 videos. It's tons of stuff, and the reviews have been pouring in. I've got 46 reviews. It's 4.9 rating. Um, I'm really proud of the course, to be honest. I put a lot of work into it, and the feedback that I'm getting is great. I'm getting a lot of emails about it, so I'm really excited about it. So if you want to take advantage of that, just check that out down below. But what I want to do is show you how I'm using some of the masks on this particular photo. And like I said, these ideas work on lots of different photos. So the first thing I do is I go to develop. And if you haven't been here before or seen many of my recent videos, you know that I use develop again and again and again. And that's just because it's incredibly powerful and it gives you a lot of control. One of the first things I like to do on a landscape is take a little bit of control over the sky because generally speaking, you're going to have an imbalance in terms of the light across your photo. Skies are usually brighter, especially in daylight hours. Foregrounds may be a little darker. It's, it's hard to get it perfect. I tend to come in with a linear gradient. And what I want to do is just come in and drop the exposure here uh, about a stop and a half. So like a negative 1.5 or so. I ended up going uh, all the way to 100 on smart contrast, which isn't something I normally do. I pulled on the highlights pretty significantly. And I pulled on the shadows as well. And in this case, I actually dropped the saturation a tiny bit and the vibrance a little bit as well. Simply because... Um, you can draw attention to something by making it brighter and by making it more colorful and also more detailed. I don't really want any of that in that distant sky. I love the clouds. I love that mountain over there. But I don't want to really draw the attention of the viewer to that. I want to make sure that I'm keeping people's attention on the beautiful part in the foreground. And so darker, less colorful, that sort of thing. That's kind of what I'm doing here. And I personally, I prefer to do that with a linear gradient. 
versus Sky AI because I can kind of blend it in to the overall photo and just kind of create that gradient zone which does not exist in the uh, in the automatic AI based masking tools. So that's the first thing. Now I'm going to close develop and I'm going to jump into my next little move and that is actually using linear gradient again. So this is the second idea which is again it's about controlling the light same as it was in the last tip. Uh, this one is controlling the light and kind of shaping the light in order to to draw the viewer's eye to certain places in a photo. And so that's going to be uh, another linear gradient. That's going to be this one coming from this side. So something about like that. I like to use a generous gradient zone. That's that fading area. Uh, and I, I like to use multiple linear gradients often in the same instance of develop. So I just back out of the tool. I open it again. And now I come over here. And you see the one on the right is still there. So you can do that where you can just come in and add multiple gradients um, at, in the same instance of the tool in order to really just um, uh, not have to reuse the tool multiple times. Now the only catch about doing it this way is that means whatever adjustments I make are going to be exactly the same in any area that I'm masking. That's okay with me in this photo. It's not always okay in every other photo. Uh, I'm going to back out a linear gradient. I'm going to open it again and I'm going to do another one kind of in the bottom. So essentially as you can see I'm kind of framing the photo. Now, um, the reason why I did this sky by itself was because I also adjusted saturation and things like that. I'm not doing that here. I'm just adjusting the light. And I'm gonna take this down, you know, maybe a quarter or a third of a stop, just a little bit, like a 0.3. There it is. If you look at the before and the after, it's slightly darker around those edges, just to give me a little bit better framing because of course I wanna focus on this beautiful uh, river and uh, leading up to the valley where the waterfalls are basically pouring off these cliffs. Iceland's nuts. I mean, it's crazy. It's amazing. I love it. So uh, that's tip number two. First tip was linear gradient in the sky with other adjustments. Tip number two is linear gradient on the sides and maybe the bottom. Um, and you know, you may need to do those individually if there's other adjustments that you want to make. But here it was just a slight darkening. So I was able to use the same instance to develop with three different linear gradients to get that job done. Now while I'm at it, I'm going to pop into toning real quick. And this is not a masking tip, but I'm just going to pop over here and do a little bit with the highlights and the blues. Uh, if you go to the number about 230 on the hue, that's a nice blue color. Saturation of about a 30, so I'm in the highlights only. I'm basically amping up that blue. So before and after, before and after. Now here's a, uh, this isn't really a masking tip. I'm actually am going to mask this. I'm going to go ahead and just get a brush and just paint it in because I just want that blue in this water. I don't really want it in the sky because as you know from uh, a couple of filters ago, I basically reduced the saturation in the sky because I didn't want um, any blue there, but I do want it here. So a mask comes in handy to really control that. So that's kind of a sub tip for lack of a better word. That wasn't really a dedicated one, but because that um, water is brighter, it's more highlight than it is shadow, I added more blue and I increased the saturation a little bit and then I masked it in just to be targeted. I don't want to go too high and make it over the top. So I was about a 30. I think that looks nice and I'm done with toning. Now the third thing I wanted to talk about is controlling detail in the photo. And for me, Structure AI is my favorite tool for that. Again, control. Um, I've talked about masking a little bit already, but really masking is about control. It's taking control of your edits and applying them specifically to certain targeted parts of the, of the image. Um, linear gradient for structure AI is perfect for me. And what I want to do is I'm going to start about uh, a little above the, uh, the center of the photo and fade it into that background. Um, I mentioned earlier that things that are more detailed and brighter and more colorful would draw the attention. Um, I want a little bit of that crunch, for lack of a better word, that detail, and I'm getting 100% of it up into the bottom line, and then it starts to fade because you would normally expect to see things less clearly and have them be less detailed the further the way they are. So I kind of fade that adjustment into the image to give a better overall look to the use of structure. I'm not really a fan of using tools like Structure AI across an entire image. I tend to be pretty specific about them. In this case, I can use a linear gradient instead of a brush to really target an area, but the linear gradient lets me fade that up into the distance and keep that detail out of the far away parts of the image 
because you just don't expect that to be very detailed. So that was tip number three. Now, another tool that I really use a lot, but I use a little bit and I pretty much always use with a mask. This is tip number four, and this is Accent AI. It's a great tool, but just don't apply it in a high amount and don't apply it across an entire photo. Uh, once again, I'm in a mask, so I'm going into mask, I'm going into radial gradient, and I tend to use Accent AI with radial gradients as opposed to linear gradients, simply because I'm usually a little bit more targeted Whereas a linear gradient is going to cover a whole area, uh, a radial gradient is going to cover the shape of the area that you uh, create with, uh, with the tool. So I'm going to invert that and I'm going to shrink it that way, make it a little bit more egg shaped, tilt it like that. And then I'm going to expand this area uh, where, the, uh, where the adjustment is going to apply and pull it a little bit more like that maybe pull it down a little bit like that. And as you can see, what I'm doing is 100% of the adjustment inside this uh, oval shape, and then it starts to fade out to basically nothing at the edges. And that's the way I like to use radial gradients, generous gradient zone, just like with the linear gradient. But with radial, a generous gradient zone, which is uh, from the inner line to that outer line, that's your fading area, your gradient zone. Uh, and then um, I don't use it at a high amount. I'm going to go at about a 20 here, 22, 20, something like that. But as you can see, if you look at the before and the after, just a little bit of brightening, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of color pop, just a little bit of oomph, a little bit of kick right there in that area. And that's why I like using Accent AI with a radial gradient because the gradient fades it into the rest of the image, and the radial is a shape you can contort to your desires, and it really, it fits in so many places in a photo just so well. So that's the way I like to use radial gradients with Accent AI, just a nice little pop of uh, accent in that area, and that was tip number four. So to clarify, that's really just taking your subject, isolating it with a mask, and giving it a little bit of pop. So now that I've done that, I want to do something in color, and this is not a masking thing. This is just a hue shift, and so I do this a lot. But if you look over here, uh, we were there in late August, early September, and basically the uh, the the yellows are, are a little too yellow for me. I I just I, I prefer that they're green, and so the way that I like to adjust that is go into the hue of the yellow, and if you start dragging that to the right you'll see that it essentially turns green. So I'm moving that up to like a high 60s, 68. It's nice and green now. It looks a little bit more vibrant. And also, if you look at the before and the after, it stands out from the background, all this rock that's kind of crumbled down in this valley and all that. That green stands out a little bit better than the yellow does because that color is further away uh, than the yellow is from what's uh, behind it, all that rock. So I just think it stands out a little bit. It pops a little bit, and that's one way, uh, hue shifts that is, that's one way to use color to add a little bit of accent to a photo. It just, uh, it's, it's a great trick. I use it a lot just to play with the hues because sometimes you can make adjustments like that one that have, I think, visually a nice impact, but it doesn't like, you're not blowing up saturation or vibrance across a photo. You're just popping a little bit in one place. Now, having done that, the other thing about color that I really like to do is, of course, control it in specific areas. So in this case, I'm going to open color again, and I'm going to go get a brush mask. This is tip number five, and that is be targeted and specific with your colors. Don't hesitate to use a mask. Usually for me, for color, I'm using a brush mask most of the time. But don't hesitate to use a little mask and go in and pop a color or make a color calm down. In this case, I'm going to go over here in these rocks that are kind of darker over here, and I'm doing a bit of a sloppy masking job. I recommend you take your time and go a little bit slower. But these areas are pretty dark, and dark stuff tends to look cooler, so they look more blue than a lot of the other stuff around them. And so what I want to do is come in here, and I'm going to go into the saturation of the blue, and I'm just going to pull that down. So I don't want to go too far and make it washed out looking, but if I pull it down like 25 or 30, something like that, if you look at the before and the after, I'm just taming that blue a little bit by using a brush to come in and just control the overall look of the color in that specific area. So brush mask with the color controls that you have in the color tools, specifically the lower section, which is HSL, which by the way, it defaults to being collapsed. I tend to open it because you get so much control going into hue, saturation, and luminance. 
I like to do that a lot in my photos. And using a brush mask with them just gives you a nice bit of control that you wouldn't otherwise have. So that was tip number five. One other thing I like to do as a wrap up is I'll often go into develop and maybe play a little bit with the controls here in the light section, sometimes black and uh, white, sometimes color. But in this case, I'm just gonna play slightly with the exposure. I'm gonna bring that up just a tiny bit, maybe pull down the highlights, maybe pull up the shadows. It feels a little bit dark, uh, you know, I think it's fine either way, maybe not that much of an exposure bump, but maybe something like that. This is just a, finishing touch. I just like to do that with my edits. Go back to develop at the end, give it a little nudge sometimes. There it is before, there it is after. I kind of like it both ways. I'm going to go with that. And for me, the last thing here is really just a vignette. I just want to kind of slightly uh, darken those edges a little bit more, even though I did that with those linear gradients. And then a little pop of inner light. It's just a nice way to kind of wrap up an image, especially on a landscape. So before, and after not a massive change, but overall pretty significant, pretty massive change in the photo from beginning to end. And if you look at the sliding window, I mean, we did a lot of things here, popping color and contrast, even though I didn't use a lot of big color moves, the colors really come to life. And that's because I'm always playing with the light and adjusting the light. Light is affecting contrast. Contrast makes colors look different. So that's why I always talk about light detail and color and generally speaking i like to edit them in that order but as i've said before and we'll say again i'm sure light's a constant theme so i'm always kind of playing with the light even though it's first it's also a constant for me in my edits but that's an edit my friends before and after and that's five different ways to use masks to really have a huge impact on your final result and get an image that you love and i, I love this photo to be honest so there is before and after that's how we use masks in luminar neo hope it gives you some ideas my friends Leave comments down below if you like this kind of video. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.